Okay, my friends, they always say simple is easy. This is simple, it's easy, and it works. Everybody knows the Bohr theory means that hydrogen is one gigantic proton and one tiny little electron. Opposite charges, but equal. It just doesn't work. They would snap together. It never worked. Now, electron flood theory says that hydrogen is all electrons. However, which means 1,838 electrons. However, this is what an electron is. It's a plus and a minus. We're going to get into it in a second. A photon is nothing more than two electrons back to back. We're going to get into that in a minute. Now, we did the experiments. I will show you these photons, these electrons, muons, and electron showers. This is the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. There's 1,838 dipole electrons, and the only thing that has power is the negative, which we always thought was an electron. Well, it is an electron, but it has this part attached to it, which they call a muon, or a boson, or whatever you want to call it. They know they're there, they know they exist, they see them in the, uh, the Hadron Collider, but there's so much debris, they don't know where they came from. I can show you where they came from because I only use light, I'm using photons. Now, only the, the concussive electron part pushes things away. The black part, the muon, it sucks. It just sucks. Come, come to me, come to me. Now, here's what happens. So now, this is the nucleus, 1838 electrons. Well, there's 1837 in the core. That means it's positive. It wants to pull one more electron in. But these coating of electrons, and they will always coat, they will always, 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 always coat everything there is. Every surface is coated with electrons. And I've proved, well, I'll show it to you anyway. No. And they push each other away from each other. It's called the Casimir effect, I believe. That. Yeah, Casimir. When they get too close to each other, they push away. They can come in and bang, almost get close. And as soon as they get too close, it's electron to electron, push to shove. That's what I call it, push to shove. That's my terminology. And it determines the distance. The, the number of electrons in the core determines the distance away that these are going to be. And if there's a ton of them here, there'll be so many negatives in, around the outside that they will push a ton of extra electrons away that still want to get in to the dark matter particles, which are the suckers. Now, here's what electron flood theory is. It's all ele elemental subatomic particles. There's nothing more than electrons. And what is an electron? It's a dipole. And what is a dipole? It has a positive and a negative end. All right, so are they equal? Well, they appear to look equal in size. Are they, do they have the same properties? No, they don't. What properties do they have, Roger? Well, they would call them a muon and an electron neutrino. That means they are dipole electrons because they're stuck together. CERN doesn't realize this. Like I said, they're digging through debris. They have no clue what they're seeing other than they're seeing these particles. Now, you can split the black ball away from the red ball, which is the explosive part. What happens when you split them? The black ball just stays like nothing. The black ball just stays black and rolls around. The, the, the explosive electron part explodes like an atomic bomb. And you can only do this, well, you can do it like, probably a lot of ways, but we did it through a Venturi. CERN did it just by accident, by having protons come close, spitting out of what they call a fermion, a boson, whatever you want to call it. And they think it just happens and there's nothing, it's, it kind of came from nowhere. No, it didn't. It was spit out from one of the, the um, protons that they're colliding. And they, can, they, they know that they do this. A neutron decays to a proton by losing an electron. Where did electron come from? It's all because they're all made from electrons. It's as simple as that. This is the entire electron flood theory. You saw everything. So here, here's what we got. Electron is a dipole. That's it. When you concuss them in the right way, you can split the polarities away from each other. We did it. This is what a photon looks like. Back-to-back -back electrons. Boom, boom. They go back-to-back. -back. We see in red, we see them in, in green.
green, and they right hand spin. And when these particles spin, that's the particle. In front of them is a magnetic region that it controls, which is the wave. So it's a particle and a wave. That, that's the particle wave duality ca case. This is the muons, the black balls, which I show you in a second in the, the, what CERN looks for and what we showed in our experiments. This is the venturi, which crushes the regions that they own, these big magnetic regions. They can't accept that. They go insane. They blow the black balls right off and they explode and then later the black balls come in. Now, these balls, black balls, don't come in back here, I don't think. So there's got to be a whole batch of extra black balls laying around just waiting for these things to attach to them. That's what I'm taking from it and they say there is extra black dark matter and that's, to me that's dark matter because it doesn't concuss, it doesn't emit, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't do anything. It's a gravitational dark matter. So my atoms are zones of stability. They're not one big gigantic proton and then a couple, uh, then a little electron, no. They're all electrons. And 1838 of them is a neutron. It's a n neutral particle because it's, it's, it's equal. Uh, 1837 is a proton. It wants one more electron, but so it's a, it's a it's an electron sucker. Now we did everything that I will show you in a second with this ex equipment right here, a couple of little lasers, a pulsed red laser, and a Samsung Galaxy S3 cell phone. And other people have done the same experiments with other cell phones. Samsung seems to lead the way, and I will show you the articles I'm reading because I, I everybody says to me, how do they do that? How do they do this with this with a cell phone? Well, that's a hard question to answer. So I started looking up, and it's, it, it boils down to some thin film um, deposits. And I also believe within that thin film, thin film deposits are some atomic chemistry that only allows for a certain vibrational frequency to see because I mean they're seeing the, the things that they're seeing with these cell phones absolutely amazing you can see webs of of electron showers and and fields in the air you can see these fields it's absolutely amazing Higgs fields everything so what I'm going to show you we did with this CERN has a little more equipment you know they spent a few more dollars than us but I think we got something that was just exactly what they've been looking for since 1978. They had special meetings on this. I'll show you what they've been talking about now. And I know they're talking about it now because I've been showing this for six years.